We are back with the League of the Genuine Conversations, the only show on the planet where we talk about the important but often ignored subject uh, of counterfeits. Our commitment is to give you as much information as you need to keep yourself and family away from the menace of counterfeits. Uh, as always, uh, we have a new and special guest every Friday where we have a conversation with me, your host, uh, Fred Mwema, about counterfeits. This time, we are continuing our conversation with counterfeits in food. To join me in discussing the subject is Mr. Walter O'Call. Mr. Walter, you are welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. All the way from Lira City. Yes. Lira is also a city now. Yeah, it's one of the cities recently. It's one of the big cities in Uganda. I could say so. It's the only city that can sustain itself without an effort. Money from the central government? Mm, yeah, because it's an agricultural town. It's an agricultural uh, town? Yeah. I was last in Lira about 10, 10 years ago, uh, but I'm told it's, it's, it's going up. Yeah. But um, it has been in the news for the wrong reasons. In July, we had reports that several tons of fake uh, maize seeds were impounded, were seized. And you are a man on the ground. What happened? Yeah, it has been on the news because, uh, like I said, it's one of the agricultural towns. So that means the business in terms of agriculture is quite huge. Mm -hmm. And every other dealer or biggest importer of seed look at that market as uh, a source of income so it, it it's it's right to be in the, in the news because uh, we we are first of all it's uh, it's quite located adjacent to the the Kenyan market that means a majority of the commodity that goes to Kenya comes from that area you sell food to Kenya. yeah we sell it to food a lot of it to Kenya what food uh, both the both the maize a lot of assorted grains I would say but most importantly we have uh, about four huge factories which are doing food processing in terms of the oil. That is Mukwano, Mount Meru. There's one called M.M. Macro. Mukwano, Mount Meru. Nile Agro, which was, Nile Agro. In, 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 which was in uh, Ginger. Mm. It's right now in Lira. And the biggest facility is in, in Lira right now. And they get huge volumes of uh, sunflower and soya bean. And of course, cotton as well. Then the other small scale industry, we have to have about 50, 58. A small industry. So that you said are sunflower, cotton, maize, yeah. the grains. Yes, and, and soya beans. Soya beans is actually the hugest market for, for the entire region. Soya beans. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but this story of the fake seeds uh, comes at a time when you are CEO AgriSol which means agricultural solution. Yes, please. Is on the ground and it is working. Did the agrisol close? That's why these fake seeds came or what? Uh, what is important is that agrisol is a private entity. Private, okay. Uh, yes, so we also do business like another uh, private uh, entity. Our role is basically as, as agrisol, we ensure that whatever we give out to the farmers in terms of the seed, to the fertilizer and the pesticide meets the standards. That is our own obligation. But uh, most importantly, uh, the incident that happened in Lira, it's like it was beyond, I would say, because uh, as uh, as private dealers, we we have a small association. Of course, it's called uh, it's a regional association. It's not not like national association. We also subscribe to UNADA, which is a big body in the Uganda National Agro uh, Import Dealers Association, mm -hmm. which which is a big body governing all the import dealers association. But uh, maybe because of laxity, I would say we had to reconstitute a small association that kind of fight and put a little For bit Lango, of Lango, La yes to to do some little bit of regulation. And I happen to be the secretary of that association, of course, aided by. Uh, one person called Mr. Patrick Ogwan. And m most importantly for us, we wanted to just put some sanity in the market. Much as we're doing business, we need to look at the social aspect and the, the, the contributions of the whatever we give out to the communities. Should so, be so was AgriSol your company? 
uh, uh, caught in this web of the fake seeds? No, not at, not at all. It's just like we wanted to do an intervention, like to mop, do a clean up exercise of what was trans happening in the entire entire town. Agrisol has never been implicated in anything. But but how how because Agrisol doesn't manufacture seeds. We don't according we, to the report I saw. We don't manufacture seed. We don't manufacture any product. I would say the only we thing distribute. we only distribute. The only thing that we are trying to formulate is. Uh, is an aspect of uh, organic fertilizer, which is a small innovation that we're getting support from our partner from the U.S. But uh, most importantly for us, we distribute products from renowned companies. Okay, now my question yeah. is, yes. according to the reports, yes. I saw that uh, most of these seeds, it was reported most of the seeds which were fake are imported from uh, Kenya and yeah. Zimbabwe. Don't you also import from Kenya and Zimbabwe? Yeah, we... Most of the seeds, I would say, then, uh, first of all, I don't want to blame the Uganda research system, is that uh, the seed that is produced within the country, it's there, but maybe the preference of the farmers, uh, they don't really rely so much on the seed that are produced. What's here. wrong with it? Uh, of course, if they match, match the competence and uh, the, 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 the output, uh, it's that, yes, it's not, you can't, the, the other one is highly advanced research. They're putting a lot of energy in the research. And the productivity is high. And the high. productivity is really high. And what happens is that Bayer, which is the biggest uh, multinational company, I think, in the region, they combine with Monsanto's. And uh, they have a base in Nairobi. But of course, their production uh, area is in uh, Zambia. And uh, I think Zimbabwe as well. But the regional logistic hub, hub which, which supplies the East African market is based in Nairobi. And all the seed that come from in the country actually pass through Nairobi logistic hub. So we then, of course, access this through the biggest importer. And they have t three exclusive importers of those products. So the rest of us actually picks from the importers. But uh, because of the porous border and of course maybe whatever happens at the border <coughs> even not everything gets checked not everything gets checked mm. uh, but of course there are other traders who actually come to buy for example those who come to buy maize come to some seed in their truck and it doesn't pass through the legal hands of the authority for example the UNBS the URA or even if they pass through URA, of course they bypass the UNBS for because normally the seed that comes to the country ideally is supposed to go through a check. Number one is that uh, they're supposed to send a, a, a test result from the uh, from the international accredited laboratory that is ISTA. Then they send it to our laboratory here, and that laboratory is supposed to also confirm. So normally the seeds which are supposed to come in the country are supposed to bear uh, two certificates. And the, the, the most cert the valuable certificate that allows the seed to be sold in Uganda is called Certificate of Conformity, yeah. which is given by our ministry here. So when someone says that I'm going to bring in seed of this parameter, it is this may be 95% site germination. The Uganda laboratory is supposed to verify that and say yes, it is 95%, and they give a certificate of conformity. And this, these are things that take some time and, and period for those processing to take place. Uh, this incident that I would say came and it was very sad is that uh, the smart, I would call it the smart boys, took an advantage of the scarcity and of course the variety was highly demanded so what then did which variety was this which they were faking of course there was um, a maize seed called uh, dk triple seven dk triple seven the dk triple seven it's a product of uh, bayer but, but like i said at the beginning that bayer is um joined on with monsanto's so they trade under bayer east africa so it came in the country so all along, these are varieties that has proven to be drought resistant. The output is very good, and it's uh, almost every farmer gets to know the, uh, that, that it, it performs. So it has been like a darling to all the farmers, even in the indignancy. If <coughs> you see the kind of calls I receive 
mm. out of 10 will ask for one single variety. Okay. Triple seven. Triple seven. Oh, there are obviously other series that also do very well. And even uh, there are some also Ugandan variety that are really, really, very good. But like then which one? Yeah, we have Bazooka, we have UH5051, we have uh, Longer 10. But of course, the energy that they put in terms of promoting it and marketing it makes it, they didn't put in enough energy. So it makes it really, really. Uh, so you're saying that um, mm. the cause of the counterfeit seeds was scarcity? Yeah, the scarcity really gave Are you saying there's a problem with the distribution of the genuine? Brand? Uh, yes, so I would say so because what happens is that normally this uh, this multinational company they project for a year and they say yes for this particular year they say we are going to release Uganda maybe one thousand metric tons. Now when they and the one thousand metric tons even if you have a very systematic system like what you cannot really produce within the shortest period of you know, that the farmers need. Of course there. Are, the scenarios, it has to go through a regular process, the processing, it has to go through testing, it has to go through cleaning and other things and packaging. So all this, and you know, being a trusted uh, company, everybody wants to, everybody wants to buy from that. So you find that they can release a batch in Uganda, then they release a batch maybe in Kenya, they release a batch in maybe Zambia and release. So normally they they need to they want to certify all the market and say okay even if we have 500 we let's let's distribute little little mm -hmm. so that every other person gets. But most importantly the scarcity cause the the counterfeiting uh, cause the counterfeiting. So people who took the opportunity that I ha they they made a copy of the original things. So uh, somebody is just. Like if you know, how did they do it? What did they change? No, they is didn't. Is it the packaging? They, they, is they, it the seed? Is they, it the color? No, they, first of all, the f the content inside was wrong. It wasn't. Well, let's start with the packaging. The packaging. Where did they get the packaging from? That that of course I, I can't tell because the packaging uh, facilities in Uganda that I know that can really produce a, a, a cavera like the one of Bayer, and they are not so much so. Uh, recently, there was a packaging that uh, was purported to have come from China. Then, of course, even the one that, uh, and it, uh, it was on news, it was impounded. We don't know whether it was burnt, so that, that, that's a story for another day. But most importantly, that particular packaging was duplicated. For us who have been in the seed industry for some time, so we know some information that are supposed to be on the seed packaging. This is my so there was wrong information, wrong like what? The what did the counterfeiter get wrong? What the counterfeiter got wrong, number one, is that uh, those seals that I was telling you, the certificate of conformity, and uh, it was printed on the bags. It is supposed to be a sticker from the ministry. So the ministry releases those stickers based on the quantity that they have tested. But for them this time, they just decided to print that provision where there's supposed to be a sticker, it was a, pr a printed, like a transparent printed information on the back. So they actually miscalculated that. And also what, what I remember I saw in that features was number one that the seed maize in the scientific name or the botanical name, because you know we borrow some of these names from, uh, from the Latin and the rest. Maize is called ZM maize. But the person who made the printing of that bag wrote Z Maya. Meaning what? Of course he even didn't know what he was writing. <laughs> so Z Maze is a scientific name of for something else. Of maze. Mm -hmm. But for him he wrote Z Maya. That's already misfired information. So literally he did not know what he was putting on. Just because he was trying to copy, but of course you know if you're copying something which you don't have the info. The seed industry is a science based industry. Just like the legal or uh, business it's, there, technical. it's very technical there are words you can misuse there's some uh, some acronyms that people speak in the NGO people speak in the law term that if me as a farmer I cannot speak so the same thing is in the seed industry or in the scientific class there are some words that when we we write the, the, the it's is clearly understood by somebody who is in that industry Walter we yes, need a break We are back here with the second segment. This is the League of the Genuine Conversations. We are putting a spotlight on fake seeds. Um, fake seeds. This 
story of the fake maize seeds. I heard that police got involved. The 20, I don't know, two tons or 20 tons were impounded. What is the status of this case? And I'm asking this because a lot of these cases against counterfeits go nowhere. Uh. I would say, first of all, me as as a, as a seed dealer and as a, uh, as a general secretary for all the import dealers, we first of all wanted to protect the other unsuspected traders who do not know how sort to distinguish. Mm -hmm. Because number uh, the, other, the other point is that we have people who are doing their business just because there's some money in it, but the scientific element in it is lacking. So it, for them, they can actually be also con, and they buy even when they know they don't know it is correct. Then obviously there are also people who shortcut of getting money. They say, yes, they sell, even when they know it is fake. So first of all, we wanted to protect those who did not know that they are buying a fake product, then uh, and and retrading it to the the community. Then we also wanted to protect the farmers who are putting a lot of money to buy something which is which ideally is fake. fake. And you know, for us in our community, majority of the people depends on agriculture. So we, when we do that intervention, first of all, we are trying to protect a child who next term is not going to go back to school. Because who, the harvest was the poor. The harvest was poor, the parent could not raise something. Number two, we also want to protect somebody who will possibly fall sick and maybe diagnose a very uh, serious ailment and because there's no money uh, from the, his production, he cannot afford for his health care. So we, we were looking at all that parameters because as a business, number one, you need to value your cost, uh, customers. Your customers is your actually biggest asset. Uh, so if they go broke, it means that you cannot, that be, able, you cannot be able to trade again. <coughs> but so, Walter, yes. did you get the culprits? Do we know that the culprits were got? They, they, Have they, they been prosecuted? <coughs> Have we destroyed the fake maze? Or it has come back into the market? Like I told you, our responsibility was to identify that the legal component or the intervention, uh, the regulation bit was supposed to be undertaken by the government. It's a wing. Yeah, but do you know, as a leader, as as a, as, a, as a leader, did they appear you, before the magistrate? Mm, leader, do you know? Not 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 did even. You see an lorry. Uh, not 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 even a single day. And the police with the. No, the they, they, the thing were the thing were very taken to the police. Uh -huh. It was it's in the it was in the police custody, uh -huh. and that's where our our our, our role stops. Importantly, I I'm, I need to tell you as your, if you fight counterfeit, it's, you also have to be a little smart because these people are very smart as well. Number one is that they also have a lot of resources they can fight you. I I know of people who are planning to ban my shop because I was doing that. I know because you're sensitizing before the sensitizing because we, we actually did this sensitization so massively to the extent that uh, one priest from the village I will, is a pastor who, who had bought this seed. Uh, he bought for the community of the people we uh, to he, boost household income. Yeah, oh, like he's is a congregant. He, he col they, the people collected the money together. So when they came to, he, they sent the pastor. So the pastor bought the seed. The, the next day he had uh, uh, a crusade, so he did not distribute the seed. But the incident of the fake seed came in. So we were there on radio, sensitizing people. So you need to get check these features. If you find these features are not on your seed, take it back to wherever you bought it from. Locate the person to give you back your money. So then the, the pastor had no information, but his congregant already had the information. So when he called the people now to distribute the seed the next day, uh, they, they said, no, but pastor, what, what we are seeing here, it's not what they have told us it's correct, so you need to take back this seed and give us back you can our, imagine the our money. So that embarrassment to, was to the extent that the gentleman, they had to remove his bull from his compound because the community said, no, for us, we will first take away your bull. Even if you're a pastor, we'll keep it. When you get back our money, we give it back to you. So it, 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 it went to that extent. To the, uh, so you had to bring back the seed. 
take yeah. to police. They brought back the, uh, they brought the person. So you can see the, 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 the social disorder and chaos yes. that this caused. But you see, it is our common responsibility to ensure that we are safe. I'm sure, Walter, when you go to shop, the government doesn't escort you. Does the other DC of Lira escort you when you're buying things? No. It's your decision. So to a large extent, the primary responsibility is yours to ensure that you're buying genuine, to ensure that. Now, part of the problem we face here is that many people think the duty to fight counterfeits belongs to somebody else, especially government. But we are the people who are actually encouraging these counterfeits by buying them. What do you see as the role of the consumer vis-a-vis -vis the role of government in fighting counterfeits? First of all, uh, to me in every settings of any business or any other intervention, that I believe that knowledge is very important. Because I can tell you that we were able to fight that counterfeit with just information. Once we told people, get these features, look for these features, it was enough for people to, uh, to say, actually I, I, I still strongly believe those who had brought in tons and tons of those counterfeit were not able to push it. Uh, I, I, one of the person called me from the village area and told me, someone came with a fake product here and he was trying to sell, like trying to offload it so quickly that uh, even at a giveaway price. But when he told him, ah, this thing is fake, he had to take off. So for me, information is very key. Uh, I would think even the governments will not waste time, let's say, looking for people. They, because for, uh, I see the regulation in, in, in the, in the, um, the regulation is really weak to the extent that the penalty is not as huge that can make someone you say, if, if I was, I'm caught tomorrow, they, maybe the fine is this, or if I'm caught tomorrow, I'll be in prison for this all this much. I have not seen that take. Takes place. But you have heard about the new anti counterfeit goods bill, which we are pushing. Have you heard about yeah, it? Yeah, I have heard about it. Uh, I wish you it could. It's a good move. Uh, I think it could come so fast that it protects the consumer because that would be the best. But uh, before even that bill goes to Parliament and get passed out, I think it is important that we really need to have the people get informed. Only that that information uh, gap, looking at the, the, the indigenous community that we deal with, it will need more, a little bit of energy. So, yeah. so you agree that the consumer, the farmer in this case, mm. plays a very, very big role in fighting, pushing back counterfeits. Mm. We should not just say it's for government. No mm. government also has a role. Yeah, government has a role in the regulation arm. They also have and a role in enforcement. But, uh, Maybe the, 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 the most valuable outcome for, us, for me, like I said, the information, knowledge, and the, the, the gap which coexists within the community. If but people Walter, get to know... Walter, don't yes. you think, yeah. for you in Lira, Lira Agro-Input Dealers, Agri-Solutions, you are, you, are, you are vigilant. Don't you think these fakers can cross from Lira to Western Nile and take the seeds? Because the people in Western Nile don't have this information. Maybe they are being duped. Don't you think there is a need, therefore, for stakeholder collaboration across in fighting counterfeits? You can't do it alone in Lango. Like I said, first of all, uh, what, what we came and to, 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 to do was basically, I would say, damage control and also to arrest the situation that was, uh, that was at, 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 at that time. But uh, most importantly, if, like I said, the whole country gets to know, like the way the campaign of if you sleep in the mosquito net, yeah. you don't get malaria. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you buy a product which is fake, it also costs you, you don't get the yield, you don't do what, the vigilancy will increase. I'd, uh, this is my 15th year in the seed industry. I was part of the people who was championing the, the Kakasa solution yeah. where farmers the scratch. Mm. scratch and Why did it fail, by the way, Kakasa? Why it failed is that uh, a majority of the, the seed company, I would say, I'm sorry to say, that fought that system because they were not able to, uh, to comply to the standard. 
so they, they had to get all the possible ways to make the system collapse. The good system, once is there, once the beneficiary is the fake one, they'll use the... Are energy. you saying, Walter, mm -hmm. that um, a lot of the seed companies in Uganda benefit from uh, the fake seed business? Or they are promoting it? I, I, I think I need to, we need to really talk about the capacity of the seed companies. We know of seed companies. In Uganda, we have about, I think it should be around 100 right now. 100 seed companies. But if you to do proper due diligence, you might find maybe 10 active in production. The seed industry is something that looks like, um, it's like pharmaceutical. Or someone making beer, for example. But for the seed that we, we sell in Uganda, it is supposed to come from research. The research does brings the line, and this line is supposed to be given to seed company. Like people bid for the for the variety. For example, if we have a variety released by Naro today and said we want a seed company that is going to, they can decide to release like twenty at once. So in the twenty, they will put the trials, and in these trials. Uh, seed company have to take opportunities and say for me i'm going with this i'm going with this so you stack you mean there is a tender system by narrow by government to say we want people to produce seeds for tomatoes for maize for what and then the companies produce and give narrow and then narrow gives the farmers no how does it work how it works is is that um narrow is is overall in terms of the seed. It's the, the regulator. Is a, is a, exactly the breed, I would say. Of course, under the arms of the Ministry of Agriculture. So all these seed companies, what they sell is called certified seed. What NARO gives is called foundation seed. Now, the certified... There's a seed scan also. It is called cancer. National Seed Certification Services. Mm. Now, that those are the ones that look at the standards and the rest. Uh, but but let me just give you a small uh, interpretation of the the foundation, the certified, the breeder seed, and the rest. So if we have a breeder called Mr. Muimba, they release ten varieties of of maize seed. He has to put. He's going to put it up in the to the seed companies. We say these are what we've released, and it is all this it has these descriptions and everything so the seed companies now comes and buy what is called that foundation from this from and the multiplies it and multiply and when you multiply narrow is supposed to come back and confirm that this is the same information the same way we developed it the same way it is performing then they certify if i can just put it in simple terms of certification it's like when you come out of the university they give you one certificate. So if you want to apply for jobs, for even if 100 jobs, you go and photocopy those jobs, uh, those, those right. applications, uh, those, those uh, certificates. You take to the authority, like the registrar, who issued you that certif certificate and certify it with additional stamp and say this is a true copy of the result that we have given you. And that is how the seed industry also plays. That so you are you saying there is no proper certification? That's why we have a lot of fake seeds. No, actually, the statistic or the data are narrow. Can can for example, for a seed company, can say maybe I have maybe ten tons, but trust me, not all the seed company will comply with the ten tons that they are produce. They will end up They will end up selling over even hundred tons. So no, I want to know because mm -hmm. me, I'm anti counterfeit. Mm -hmm. I just want to know the picture. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that a lot of the seeds on the market are fake because they are not going through the proper certification? Is it, that a, a it, 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 it or make, some? It, okay, some of it. It makes it fake in the sense that the compliance is very poor. Because, for example, if you declare to the breed to the to the research station that I, I come and buy, let's say, five hundred kilograms. That 500 kilogram mass and multiply effect, of course, if it is 50, that's about 50 acres. 
So that 50 acres, it's supposed to give you maybe, if, if you're doing hybrids, in a range of about uh, 1,800 kilos. That 1,800 kilos should be your last figure. But, but then you exceed it. If you, ex if you exceed beyond like three yeah. times, it really yeah, doesn't make sense. Point. You get, get the, the point. point eh? yeah. So then the, if you go to the, uh, the, the narrow, because as narrow is issuing this, 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 this certificate, uh, it is issuing this foundation seed, the issue is receipts. But if you go to narrow, you'll find seed company. So the follow-up is? You, you'll find seed poor. company has bought one of 50 kilos. 100 kilos well, but you go back to uh, this uh, go back to, <coughs> to their to statistic of what they have sold is more than let's take a break yes we're back with the third and last segment we are here talking matters to do with seed fake seed which we just had in northern uganda and i believe this story is not peculiar to northern uganda do you think the story of the fake seeds is only in northern uganda now the story of fake seed is it's all over the country and uh, the only thing that it is a big issue is identifying the one which is good the one which is fake yeah do you think therefore or what do you think we should do to ensure compliance with the standardization because it appears we have the structures we have the institutions what should we do to ensure compliance and enforce these standards First of, all, first, first of all, I think uh, the most important thing as the, the, the local seed producers, the, 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 the local seed producers need to, to really hype their game in terms of... How? Uh, yes, number one, in terms of what they produce. Quality-wise. Quality of what they produce. Because the seed which comes from outside, it's like for us, it depends on fuel from out. This seed, though, these people of seed from out for example they they can decide to be like terrorists say this year we are not selling seed it means that all countries not having food so the same way if i see an oil dealer say today i'm not selling oil it means that we get stuck we get stuck you can get stuck but in can the we jam. have uh, technology transfer skill transfer so that we can produce quality seed why should we be dependent on imports uh, like I said, uh, first of all, I, I said this with a lot of pain. Majority of the, the, the seed companies in Uganda really concentrated on big projects of NADS, OWC, NOSAF. Where the standards have to be low? Uh, they, they get, okay, they concentrated in supplying all of those entities. So it, they forgot the farmers. So that's why these people... No, but those entities, do they take fake? Because if you're I can I, I, I can tell you uh, that that discussion may 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 really not be very healthy here. But what what I know is that uh, you see once a, a supply is going in bulk volumes, the sampling really may not the integrity, get, the integrity be. can be compromised. Yeah. So as as the other guys were concentrating on research. Our people, so own, uh, our people or me are concentrating on big projects that could make money for them and they forget the, 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 the scientific aspect. If you go to big companies which do seed production at in large scale, you can actually trace, even from the way the scary alone dress, you know that there's quality here. You've been to international big hotels and whatever, you see how they, the standards are that in those places. So that's the same standard they put in. So, but but for us, yeah, there's uh, a lot of gambling, I would say. But it's something that can only be strengthened. So, so, so you you also agree that uh, we now have a counterfeit culture. We have generally in our way of life, our behavior, just counterfeit. We have a subculture. You're speaking to that now. It appears. I I, I can I can guarantee, and I I, I stand with my word. I say this is something we only need to deal with, most importantly, for us who are in the seed industry, especially the, the, the people who produce, they should really look at the, the, the pain that the farmer go through. Uh, I can imagine uh, my mother in the village buying something and expecting that, hey, tomorrow I have to send my children to school and, and after, and, uh, after the harvest, get yeah, air, I, I get air. I, and, and, and of course, we, 
the, the, where this seed come from, I would say, for example, the, the, the genuine seed, where it come from, their climate is like not even as good as ours, I would say. For example, oh, look at Kenya, look at Zambia. You can't compare the quality of the weather, the, weather, the quality of the, the climate, soil the soil there. Here the you, water uh, the, we have. The water we have. Here is actually a very soft ground for any other investors who want to really venture into a, a quality production. Be but but um, I can tell you, as a matter of fact, the cost of living would obviously go up because last year, okay, this year that ended, I bought a kilogram of beans at about 8,500 shillings. That is almost, you're buying a broiler chicken. That's the same, uh, same... Up from how much? It used to be uh, how much? 2,000. The highest used to be 2,500. That's an increment of 300%. Uh, 300%. So you, you look at... Now, a farmer have to convert... Let's say someone has produced sunflower seed, sunflower grains. A farmer has to convert 10 kilograms to buy one kilo of beans. But you know that beans is a staple of food in, the, in this country? So it means and the price goes up by three hundred percent. Three hundred percent. The reason but in other countries they riot when the price goes up by ten. But when you riot, uh, it yeah, we have too much food or what? No, no there is no food here. The seed, the food, the, the beans that is eaten in Uganda actually come from Tanzania. That one you can do. What check. do you mean? It comes from Tanzania. Even the one that uh, that that I eat in my village comes from TZ. We import beans. We import beans seriously. How is that possible? It's very what possible. What happens to the beans you produce? It's <laughs> First of all, the, 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 it's no longer really... Uh, people have given up in, in, in producing beans. Why? I think the weather is also an issue, but m most importantly, uh, they are really... No access uh, to genuine seeds? The genuine seed for beans is a problem. So this issue we are dealing with, of the fake seeds and so on, what is its impact on our food security and food sovereignty? And we're we going to die of hunger soon. I have just said that the the, the, the people who gives us good seed is uh, it's just like people who are offering uh, much as they're making money, but they're doing a lot for this economy. I've told you that these people decide if they decide they say tomorrow we are not selling seed. To Uganda, Uganda. Would or, we, to death. or we have made enough money on seed, we are now going to start manufacturing vehicles. Uganda will starve to death with the fertile soils. And with the, the good fertile soil and the good rain, because if you don't have seed, that means you cannot get the, get the good harvest, and that is how serious the thing is. If just this side say. We are suspending our Ugandan market. It means that we cannot be able to produce seed. That we cannot be able to produce, despite having a, a, a very good climate. So that means that the, our Ugandan companies should be really help us work on this mm. and improve their standards. But you see, I was checking online the story of the fake seeds, and uh, the traffic, the number of views it received was so small the interest of the people in the story that story aired or was published at the same time with other stories which had a lot of attention zari is marrying uh katol wama's barrio not no disrespect to, to to the deceased uh butcherman is going back to bobby wine this is what people were following people are not interested in these stories of fake seeds and whatever, what, what is happening? What, 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 do we have our priorities right? Why are we not interested? I think that in tells you where our priority as a country is. First of all, uh, we, we need to look at, uh, when we're growing up, uh, they used to say that agriculture is the backbone of the country. But first of all, uh, the, 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 with due respect to the honorable member of parliament and the rest, what they have to appropriate in that backbone of the country because if it's the industry that is employing over 75 percent people mm -hmm. because it doesn't obviously give direct employment i will like 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 somebody works in the office and gets here but it really finds people automatic in that industry 75 percent of the ugandan by the way do agriculture 
with the exception of the few few who are in maybe teaching, few who are in uh, the, the legal practice, few who are in other other industry. But the rest of other selling people, airtime. Air, air time. The rest of other people are in agriculture. So what do we need to start? The priority number one as a country, we need to really put it also. If if the if the budget for seventy five percent is maybe number seven in the national budget, that's already a big issue number one. Because we, we we need to deal with this situation from now uh, from you, macro level. Ma macro level. You you if you, if you watch Kenya election, if you find the, the top candidates, all of them in their manifesto, you find fertilizer is number one. So I mean they want to deal with the issues the of the cost food. of fertilizer. The cost of fertilizer is number one on their manifesto. And what, for us here, what is the number one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to discuss that. But that is, eh? as a country, we need to deal with our priority rightly. Because uh, if we are looking at talking about uh, the, the social media, people are doing what, and really, and you, 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 it means that you, you are not discussing about the 75% of the population. You are discussing about maybe 1% or 2% of the population. We believe, uh, Walter, yes. that a robust and effective anti counterfeit strategy involves a mindset change, a behavior change of the community. Do you agree? I agree, I agree that in, in totality. Like I said from the beginning of my conversation, I said the, the, the information flow. We can fight in a battle is just information the, the enforcement aspect comes after the regulatory aspect can even come after if you go there the other countries actually uh, the police has not had job for a, a, a almost a full year you find police has no case to, 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 to handle but just just close the police station in Uganda in one day you get eh? so there will be anarchy like people will kill themselves people will do so many funny things actually i think it's uganda with the busiest police in, in in the country in the entire continent because there are countries where you literally don't see police on road you don't see even soldiers on road you don't see what on road it's just even because traffic it's just because on its own traffic clocks on its own it's just because of discipline just because information is there People take road signs so for, uh, for, for granted. People take, uh, and that is a center of information, road sign, the signages and whatever. All this gives very, very sensitive information. So I think as, 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 as anti-counterfeit, uh, there's a lot more to do. I do not know how long it has, uh, it has been. Uh, coming to a decade now. Coming to a decade. But I think uh, it's most importantly that we need to really do a lot of collaboration with even the consumers. See how to work. As we close, mm. AgriSol, Agriculture Solutions. Mm. How are you tackling the counterfeit challenge? I think uh, most first and foremost in, uh, with us, uh, when, when I was opening AgriSol, uh, I saw people are doing agriculture in the olden days. I was privileged to conduct, be a consultant for an international organization on the input sector. But I can tell you the story which, which I have in my book there, it's, it's quite huge and painful because first what of all, story? No, no, the, the, you go to an agricultural shop that has stock inside, but maybe half of the stock is already expired. Now, that is the issue that we need to involve the importers or the, the, the manufacturer. That if your stock is expired, you need to look for this and pick them away. Unfortunately, the importers of the pesticide, fertilizers, mostly pesticide, they do dumping with agricultural uh, shops. And also the, 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 the import dealers do not know their rights. Because you find the, the product is already expired like two, three years ago. I, 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 this, this one I did it myself. We, we ran out in the region and we, I did an extensive survey 
it was a consultancy project that we had to discover product which are like three, four years expired. It's still in the shelf. In and the it's, market. Maybe it's even still being sold. Number two. They, have they changed the expiry date? They don't change the expiry date. What they're only, don't read what they're only smart to doing is that where that particular point where it is showing expired is the where they start writing their prescription. It said maybe 200 ml. <laughs> but, and you see how smart they are. So, uh, so but 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 uh, but I think um, the, the 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 important bit is that that industry needs a very strong, serious regulation. Needs a lot of collaboration. If the the guys of the chemicals are doing their own work very well, the guys of the seeds are doing their work very well. The input dealers are doing their work very well. I think we can be able to push the economy a bit better, and also. We really need very, very strong, and this is where now the, 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 the members of parliament need to come in to really support. Because if you can put a road penalty of high speed at two million shillings, why do you put a penalty for a fake product where someone is faking a product of two, uh, two billion? Which will affect the lives which of will affect the, the life whole of community. Maybe a, not all community, entire district, I would say. But then the the fine is like forty thousand. So that is not not proportional. It's not commensurate. It's not commensurate. So importantly, we need to really strengthen this industry. And if we get our priority right as a country, we can be able then to push. And and all these way, these big buildings will. Walter, as we close, yes. what is the? Somebody may want to know, what is the health health impact of these uh, fake agro inputs? Of course, being fake make, makes it being fake makes it uh, very very dangerous and risky for people to use for the for the, the fake one. But I would say uh, even the good ones just needs a lot of care to handle. That is why uh, for all the people who do uh, agricultural inputs, they're supposed to undergo some training. Uh, re before they used to put standard that senior for, I think the ministry has also done their work and realized that um, maybe they need uh, a minimum should be certificate in agriculture. Just like the drug shops, when you go to the drug shops and you find that the person who is selling seed do not know the information, really you are putting the life of the consumer at a risk, and that is the challenge that we also have in the, the same industry. I like I said I would, I I moved around the entire region to, to do a lot of surveys. You 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 would go to a shop and the person who is in the shop only knows the price, but doesn't they know. Don't know what they are saying. They don't know. He knows only that that bottle costs maybe ten thousand or the other bottle costs twenty thousand. But, but doesn't know its use. But does knows how is it applied? How much can I put in? How much? Can I? So that is actually one of the reasons why I had to open Agrisol. Because we wanted to deal with the solution, the problem that really affect the farmers. Walter, yes. As you say bye mm -hmm. to the audience, we have an acronym called Dankani. We think those are the drivers of uh, counterfeiting, which, according to you, since you've researched and you're on the ground, which is the biggest driver of counterfeits? I think the 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 the, the, the biggest driver in counterfeit. Uh, Number one is uh, uh, the affordability. If I'm to re uh, rearrange it, the affordability is one of the issues. Price. And the price is one of the issues. Then obviously the the ineffective corporations because mm. uh, you if you pick the seed, uh, you pick the product and take to police. Police would want someone to come and put put a case. The brand owner, who, the brand who most times they don't come. Who most times they don't come. Then also the brand owner could actually not come, but what is the regulator talking about? Because you find that the case is registered there, but they, they, it's very weak for it to go to court, I would say. It can't go to court, nobody can actually be uh, convicted, convicted. convicted for this thing. But also, uh, I, I think also there is a lot of, uh, a lot of syndicate around the, the, the people who are really doing the regulation because they, 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 they get to know this information. They are to compromised. Be, they, they get to know this information. But we don't see a lot of actions, I would say, taking place. Uh, but but uh, those I two think stand out for you. Those two stand out for me. But I think if we could really um, 
really incorporate the, the knowledge gap, information, information education, gap, education awareness. awareness. Your message to the audience. My message to the audience, number one, is that uh, first and foremost, you need to, uh, to, to, to appreciate that information is key. And any information that comes in the public, you shouldn't take it for granted. We, we see a lot of people in, in, in WhatsApp group, but the WhatsApp group is just to forward uh, junk message of MTN is doing promotion here, uh, Kenya Airways is giving free tickets. And comedy. Uh, and, and comedy. The there's, there's, there's really no serious conversation that really takes place in, uh, in, in WhatsApp group. So if we could start using those information devices uh, in a more profitable way that really gives, mm. makes sense for the community, mm. it will really give uh, a, a, lo a lot of have better impact. Uh, better impact. <coughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Walter, this has been the League of the Genuine Conversations. We've had Mr. Walter here, CEO of AgriSol Agriculture Solutions. He comes from Lira City. He has been helping us to unpack, understand the incident around the fake maize seeds uh, that we had in July, as you can see, there is a big problem and this ultimately affects all of us. My takeaway from this is that Uganda does not have its own bean seeds. We have to import from Tanzania. This is very scary. This is something that we need to interest ourselves in. Otherwise, very soon we shall not have food on the table. We would like to sign off by thanking you as always uh, for being a good audience uh, this is the only show every friday we are here to give you information about counterface uh, we thank those who have subscribed uh, please tell a friend to tell a friend uh, to subscribe please share the videos if you like what we are doing and uh, until then uh, don't be fake buy and sell genuine